so let me give you a brief introduction about the CCR, uh, CCSA introduction. So as you already aware that this is a checkpoint uh, certified uh, security administrator. And um, uh, if you want to pursue this particular exam, so I would recommend to go for the new version that is R80.10. And uh, the exam code is uh, 156-215.80. And uh, in this exam, there are uh, 90 questions and the exam duration is 90 minutes. And uh, you have to pay, of course, 250 USD. And you need to have a passing score about 70% mar uh, marks. And you can schedule the exam in a Pearson BOE. So this is about your exam. And if you want to pursue your, your career career in a checkpoint, so there are so many uh, certification like in the Cisco. So uh, in here, so many certification. So the entry level certification, you go for the CCSA. And after the CCSA, you can go for the CCSE. And after the CCSE, you can go for CCSM. So even if somebody has a CCSA on a CCSA on R77 version, so they need to renew the, their CCSA certification and uh, on on the new version. Apart from these certification program, you can also go for some other certification as per your choice. So uh, there are more certification program you can see here. Let me open chat side by side. If you have any question, you can uh, post on the chat as well. Okay, all right. If I talk about the CCSA course all uh, uh, outline, so these are the topic which we'll cover on the course and in, in, in the depth. And uh, first point is the introduction to checkpoint technology. So here uh, we will cover how checkpoint works and uh, how we can set up the checkpoint, basically installation of the checkpoint and other things. So packet flow we will see here. Packet flow is most important when you are doing a debug or troubleshooting something. Right. So, um, uh, the next point we will cover deployment platform. So uh, a deployment platform are different in a checkpoint. You can deploy checkpoint as a standalone or you can deploy it as a, uh, as a, di a distributed model. And you can deploy the checkpoint uh, on based on the virtual machine and you can also have the dedicated hardware. So these things we will cover. Then monitoring traffic and connections. So here we will cover traffic monitoring, how you can monitor that, uh, what is traffic going and what is traffic not going. I mean, what is blocked, what is denied, you can see all these things. Net, we will cover over here. So basically if you want to allow uh, internal client to access internet, so you need to do netting as well as if you want to publish your ser server over the internet, so you need to also do netting. So those things we'll cover here. Then using a smart update. So a smart update is a centralized tool using it. it you can update checkpoint devices, maybe single device or multiple device in a one shot. Then we will see here how you will manage the user authentication. Let's suppose if there is a user in your environment and he want to access internet. So based on uh, user, you can also apply the policy. So a uh, firewall you can also use as a proxy. Then introduction about checkpoint VPN. So this is the last point which we'll cover over here. And one more point I forgot to add that is a HA in a checkpoint. So we will manage HA as well. So how you will configure your firewall in a failover mode and how will you, uh, how will you configure your firewall in a active standby mode. So all these things we'll cover over here. So uh, the next is about the uh, firewall evaluation. So if you see in the market, there are so many uh, firewall vendor and uh, 
most top is a uh, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, Juniper, Fortinet. These are the top most uh, uh, vendor. So there is a report in a side by side. You can see here there is a report from Gartner, and uh, you can say which vendor is on top and which vendor is second, third, fourth. You can see over here. So Checkpoint right now is on fourth position as per a report that was published on September 2019. So basically, um, sometimes uh, one vendor compete to another vendor, so that is happening actually. So if I talk about the firewall types, so basically there are two types of firewall. That is a host-based firewall and network-based firewall. So host-based firewall is what which is protecting a particular host and network based firewall is protecting entire network. So if you talk about the Windows firewall, that is a basically host based host based firewall. And in Linux, you already know that there is a IP table and that is also host based firewall. Right. So uh, if I talk about network based firewall, so a network based firewall can be deployed as a hardware. So you should have a dedicated hardware model uh, on which you can deploy the network firewall or you would have a virtual server. On virtual server, you can deploy network based firewall or you can deploy firewall on public cloud as well like Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, you can deploy. Then a firewall is a based on, uh, if I talk about the firewall history, so initially there was a packet filtering firewall, which was able to filter the packet based on the source IP and destination IP, but it could not filter the packet based on the port number. So there was another firewall came that is a stateful packet filtering, which was working on, which is working on layer three and layer four, and it can filter the packet based on the uh, source IP destination IP source port number destination port number. Also, it maintained the state table. That means if you allow one way connection from your inside to outside, so reply traffic would be also applied because it knows that this connection is allowed. And um, after the stateful uh, packet filtering firewall, there is an application firewall come into the picture. So uh, this particular firewall works on layer two to layer seven. So application firewall is uh, like, uh, uh, nowadays you can see, uh, it is a more application aware firewall and uh, this firewall can block traffic based on the application. It is also able to identify that in particular application, what capability should be allowed or what capability not allowed. Maybe in your network, there are mobile user who wanted to use Facebook. And uh, in a Facebook, there are multiple functionality that user can chat, do video call, or send the post. So you can granularly control it. Like if you want to control that some user can do chatting, but not a posting or doing a video call from your network. So you can also maintain those things using application firewalls. So Checkpoint, Palo Alto, or Cisco Firepower, these are the firewall which can work on the, uh, work on the application, up to application layer. The next firewall is a web application firewall. So this is basically used to protect your web traffic. Like uh, if you have a website, so in the website, there are so many attacks nowadays happening like a SQL injection or authentication, a brute force attack, something like that. So the web application firewall is capable to protect such kind of traffic and detect it. Um, if you want to access our online labs, so you need to open racks.uninets.com, this particular website. I'm going to post it on chat as well. And over here, you just need to do sign up. Once you do sign up, once you do sign up, uh, it's not loading for me. 
you can do sign up once you do sign up you can um, log in over here so let me log in over here i'm just going to provide my mobile number and then password and i would be able to access lab okay guys so once you log in here you can see the labs there are different types of lab we have and uh, you need to choose ccsl lab and here you will be able to see the topology different topology we have so these are the devices we have and you can power on the devices from here all devices you can power on and once the devices get power on you can just double click and access it see its console is being open over here so it's a pretty simple to access the lab you can access switch router etc server it's being loaded yeah, yeah. host so super easy to manage the lab and perform the lab whatever the task you have you would be able to perform online only and you can access this lab from anywhere maybe in your from your organization also so it's not blocked on your uh, organization because this site come under the educational category 